Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. In this video, Punnett squares will be introduced. You will learn how to set up Punnett squares and interpret the results. Punnett squares are a tool that can be used to predict the likelihood that offspring will have certain traits. For example, if you were to cross the plants with green and yellow peas in this example, what is the probability that their offspring would have green peas? Probability is the likelihood of an event occurring. The number of chances that an event has of occurring divided by the total number of possible outcomes of an event. If you were to flip a coin, there is one head and there are two sides of that coin. There is a one in two possible outcomes of flipping a head. If you were to roll a typical six-sided dice, there is one four on the total of the six sides. There is a one in six chance of rolling a four. All casino games are based upon the same rules of probability. Punnett squares are two by two squares that are used to determine the probability of different events occurring in genetics. They look quite simple when empty, as shown in the image to the right. The real trick involves figuring out what goes on the outside, what goes on the inside, and how to interpret these results. What goes on the outside of the Punnett square are the genotypes of the parents. Sometimes these genotypes will be given to you, and sometimes you'll need to figure them out for yourself. One letter goes to the left and on top of each of the boxes in this Punnett square. After filling out the outside of the Punnett square, you need to figure out what goes on the inside. You will need to put each of the letters that is above a Punnett square and on the left side of the Punnett square into each of the rows and columns that it's next to. In the diagram on this slide, you can see the capital G and lowercase g on top of the Punnett square should be placed in both of the boxes found below these letters. The same is true for the capital G and the lowercase g on the left side of the Punnett square. When you drag these letters to the right and drag these letters down from the outside of the Punnett square, each of the boxes within the Punnett square should contain two letters. When filling out Punnett squares, it's always nice to avoid letters like S's or C's, where both the upper and lower cases look similar. While Gregor Mendel didn't know it at the time, his results could have been explained simply using Punnett squares. When he crossed individuals that were pure breeding, or homozygous, all of the resulting offspring showed the dominant trait. When you fill out a Punnett square, you can see that each of the resulting offspring would have been heterozygous. Since they have one copy of that dominant allele, they would end up showing the dominant trait. When Gregor Mendel self-pollinated the heterozygous purple-flowered pea plants, as shown in the image here, he found a 3 to 1 ratio of purple to white flowers. Again, this graphic, and Punnett squares more generally, exhibit why this would have occurred. When you cross two heterozygous individuals, one in four would receive the recessive alleles from both of their parents and they would exhibit the recessive phenotype. That is the end of this video providing an overview of how to fill out Punnett squares. Punnett squares can be quite challenging to some students. There are a tremendous number of other videos providing examples of genetic probability and Punnett square practice problems. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in watching any of these other videos pertaining to genetics or any other themes of biology. Thank you.